Okay, class. Let's uh, let's go over these a little bit here. Um, I need your help. So remember, the first line of defense when you're factory is to look for the greatest, greatest common factor, right? Uh, and you should always do that. If there isn't one, no harm done, right? You should always look for one first, though, because it'll make your life easier. So with that hint, is there a greatest common factor? Is there anything that's in common between the two of these? Each of these terms can be evenly divided by x. Right? Do you see it? Is x squared divisible by x? I want you. I think a lot of people are looking at that and they're like looking for numbers like two or three or something like that, right? Because you're like thinking the numbers. Well, you're right. One and six don't have anything in common except for one. That's not helpful. But remember, we're not just looking at the numbers. We're also looking at the variable part. And when you look at that, isn't it true that x is in common? Okay. That being said, if you agree that both of these can be evenly divisible by divided by x, then we can write x, and then. This is kind of, the, all of these are like reverse multiplication problems, right? We want to think, what was multiplied together to get what we're looking at? So you could say x squared divided by x is what? Or if you don't like me saying x squared divided by x is x, you could say x times what gives me x squared, and the answer is x. Uh, or over here, x times what gives me 6x. And that's as factored as it goes, right? You know it's as factored as it can go if you get, if you've got it all down all the way down to linear stuff, right? With no x squared or anything. All right, and the next two you should look for a common factor too, but I think you'll find that on both of those there's nothing that can be evenly divided. There's, you can't pull an x out. Not all of them are divisible by four. We're kind of close, right? But oh well. But it's not wrong to look for one. You should always look for one. That being said, we need some other kind of like reminders about factoring techniques you might have learned last semester, right? So a lot of you guys that was walking around did have some success with this, but it's been a while. So someone remind me how to approach one like the. Oh. Tell us how to go. Oh. Okay. Yeah, you're looking for two numbers that have a product of negative 12 and a sum of negative 4 and all that. And I think a lot of us have that kind of like mantra memorized. We're like, oh, I just, I just, because I just follow the recipe that someone told me once. But it should just kind of make sense, too. Here's the way you should reason through these if you're like a detective. You should think, hey, I think I've seen this guy before. This is the kind of thing that we obtain when we multiply two binomials, it feels like. Doesn't it kind of feel that way? Maybe I'm wrong. Could be wrong. But we could try at least, right? No harm in trying and being wrong, right? Let's try. Because I have this familiarity, because I've done a lot of multiplication problems in my life. And this feels like the kind of thing that happens when I foil, doesn't it? In fact, um, oh, if so I were foiling first, I'd, multipl I'd multiply these first. And what do I think? Well, I think I'd get x squared. So maybe I'm going to make a guess that this and this are x. I think that's a fair guess, wouldn't you? Because when we're foiling, we're going to get x squared. OK, I'm get making guesses here. That's all I'm doing. Furthermore, let's jump to the L, F O I. L, last, I know that when I multiply these numbers here and here, I get negative 12. So I don't know, I make a guess. How about negative 3 and positive 4, right? Let's try it. Some of you are like, I know, I know, I know. I know it's wrong. But look, this is how you go about it, right? You just try stuff. OK, well, then you check it. Does it work? Certainly, x squared and negative 12 are good. But does the, F, the O and the I, do those work? We get 4x and negative 3x. Is that'll be positive 1x, not negative 4x. All right, so we were wrong. No, not a big deal, right? But we're on to something here. We think that we're making progress. Maybe it's supposed to be something else. How about negative 12 and positive 1? Wouldn't that work? Well, in the middle, maybe not. So you see what Chantel's saying? What, what were the numbers, Chantel, that we need? Um, and maybe you're going to take a couple guesses and have to like have an eraser nearby as you do this. But that's OK. I think a lot of people are intimidated by this because they're like, really? The, me me the method is guessing? Yeah, that's the method. Isn't it exciting? It should be kind of like delightful because everything else in, this, in math sometimes feels kind of procedural. But this is kind of like fun. It's a puzzle. We, I, you know, this is how I do it too. I have to kind of make do some you good guesses. Do you feel like guessing is not your thing? 
you think about negative 12 and you think about the factors of negative 12. Yeah, go through again, all of them. Which again is still just, you write them out and you just kind of guess which one's going to work. Yeah. And I think, you know, maybe, maybe you think like, oh, but you're so good at this. Well, I, or, or your, your friend who is teaching you is so good at this. Well, the only reason we're good at this is because we've like seen a bunch of them, right? And, and you, you'll get better at it too, just from exposure. But all we're doing is what you're doing. Kind of guessing and going by feel. And when you arrive at those numbers that work, it's kind of fun. You're like, oh, sweet, I got it. I feel the same way. It's like you're unlocking the door or something. This last one's actually the same. From my experience as a detective and a mathematician, I have had this experience once upon a time where I multiplied two binomials and I got something that looked like this too. So I'm gonna make another bold guess. I could be wrong, right? But in all cases, if I know I'm wrong, right? That's the beautiful thing about these. If I'm right or wrong, I know I am. Because all I have to do is multiply them out to check. Right, you multiply this out and you get this. Good, we're done. Multiply this out, you get this. So whatever we think it might be, we can check. I'm going to think the same way again about it. If we're foiling, this has got to be maybe an x and an x. We need two numbers here again that produce negative 100. So, you know, you have options. Negative 50 and positive 2, right? Well, a bunch of options, don't you? Negative 25 and positive 4. Right? But, what needs to be the middle term on this guy? 0, right? So how's that going to happen? The O and the I have to just disappear somehow? Yeah, what's the answer? Someone tell me. I know some people out there have it, Carlos. Yeah, negative and positive 10. And let's just verify that that does work, right? We're kind of doing this backwards engineering on these problems. So let's just check it. We get x squared uh, first. Outside will be 10x. Inside will be negative 10x. Ah. And the last will be negative 100. But do you see the O and the I, the negative 10x and the negative 10x actually cancel Wait, out in there? You get this Where is there an O and I? F O I L. You know. Oh, okay. I'm just saying you get foil. You, like, you guys love foil, right? I don't know. If you foil this out, the middle two terms cancel out, don't they? You get a 10x and a negative 10x. Yeah. You get the same answer you get if you put x plus 10. Yeah, try it. Multiply x minus 10. Excuse me, x plus 10, x minus 10. Yeah. Did that work too? Is it true that A times B is equal to B times A? Yeah, all of these up here. If you want to write them in the other order, it will work. It didn't work? It should. In the middle? No. If you do x, oh, did you say x plus 10 times x plus 10? That doesn't work. No. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying is x plus 10 times x minus 10. Yeah, you could do these in any, any order. But, yeah, we should st stop and say there is only one correct solution to these, though, right? It's not like, hey, I got x minus 10 and x plus 10. And someone else is like, well, I got it worked x minus 25 and x plus 4. No, you didn't. Right? No, you didn't. <laughs> There's only one unique factorization for every polynomial. It's actually called the fundamental fundamental theorem of algebra. What if you just switch those two? Right, we consider that the same. Right. All right. You ready to launch into multiplying and dividing rational expressions? Here we go. It's going to require this technology that we just practiced. So, buckle your seatbelt. We'll start. We'll try and start. <coughs> yourself, but it's okay. going to get it's going to get intense soon. So, brace yourself. Oh. Do you like titles at the top of your notes? Here's one. Yep. Go for it. Nine point four. We're still in our unit on rational functions. And just to kind of give you a, a little bit of a big picture of where we're headed uh, and where we've been. We've been, we graphed some rational functions recently. Now we'd like to really amp up our, our usage of rational functions. In the coming days, we're gonna look at multiplying and dividing rational expressions. And then after that, we're gonna work on adding and subtracting rational expressions. And trust me, that's the right order to go in. And I'll remind you why. Actually, this is like a perfect storm. This, this, this section is like a perfect storm. Because this requires not only your prerequisite knowledge of factoring, which a lot of you don't like, but it also requires your prerequisite knowledge of fractions, which a lot of you don't like. It's like a perfect storm right here, okay? So let's see. Brace yourself for the storm, okay? Um, 
So let's recall together how to multiply fra or to how to simplify a fraction first. Okay. Do you remember how to work with this kind of expression? You know, don't you? Just like I do, that we don't want to write 20 over 25. We'd rather write 4 over 5 because it's simpler. Do you agree? And how do we go through that simplification process? Well, we look for what's the thought process there. Yeah, we're looking for actually a common. Well, no. We're looking for the greatest common factor of the numerator and denominator, right? We're looking for, which sounds familiar, actually we've just been doing some factoring. Ah, maybe this relates somehow. Yeah, we want to look for any factors of the numerator that are also shared by the denominator, and we want to cancel them out. So we see, don't you see, that there's a 5 contained in the numerator and a 5 in the denominator? So you divide them out. Beautiful. How about this? This is a little more general, but it's actually, with letters, actually it's easier, isn't it? It's actually easier with letters. You're like, I didn't have to think at all. I just cancel out the A's. But that's really the same principle, isn't it? Let's get more abstract. <coughs> this is one you've done before. Can you, do, can you handle that simplification? Is it true yeah. that this can be simplified into this? How did I do it? X to the fifth over X is X to the fourth. Y over Y to the third is Y to the negative second, or if you want to write y squared on the bottom, right? Yes? That's something we've done before, but it's been a little while too. So. But all of these, every single one of these is operating on the exact same principle, right? We're canceling something out of a product that's in the numerator and a product that's in the denominator. We cancel it out. Or, can we get even more abstract? How about this last one? I mean, really, it's actually the same principle. Honest x squared and x to the fifth, we can cancel those out, can't we? Mm -hmm. Leaving just an x cubed on the bottom. And actually these things, even though they're complicated and big and nasty, the x plus twos can cancel out too. Well, why does it cancel out to one? Because x plus two over x plus two is one. Yeah, so that's kind of wild, but this, I think we'd all prefer, instead of writing this big nasty thing, this is really just one over x cubed, yeah. Okay. Just just to be clear, I want to make sure because sometimes you get you're like canceling is fun. Oh, let's just say that right now. It's going to be the fun part of these problems, like when you get to a place where you can cancel stuff out. <clears throat> but it's so fun that some of you guys like go crazy and get excited early cancel on happy. in the problem. You get cancel happy. <laughs> yeah. So I want to make sure you're clear on this, right? <clears throat> Every time. So if someone if, if you see this, right, and you're like. That's equal to b over c, right? No, right? Every time you do this, a uh, kitten dies. It's not a daughter who died. Really? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I call this. Every time you do this, a star gets burned out in the sky. What do you like? I don't know. What if it's the sun? So if it's uh, probably more common than that, yeah. What if it's the sun? Then we're all fried. Okay, this is not okay. Right? Why? Why? Why can't you do that? Seems legit. Looks, looks fine. I was gonna. I was just about to do that actually in this case. Why can't you do that? In fact, just to convince yourself that it's crazy talk, put in some numbers in there. Right? Yeah. I mean, if you were to put some numbers in there, is it true that like three plus two is equal to three plus seven? But three plus two over three plus seven is equal to two sevenths. Is that true? No. This is five tenths, right? This is one half, isn't it? Together. That's not true. But by saying this, that's what you're saying, aren't you? Aren't you saying the thing, right? So what's the difference? This works down here. What's the difference? It's the total numbers. The total numbers. Total amount. Yeah, it's the, the fact that we're multiplying versus adding, right? And that means everything, actually, right? That's all. Yeah, that's all I was looking for. Sorry, right? Yeah, you can't cancel things out in sums, right? And it should make sense why. You can only do it in products. So let's try one that's slightly more complicated, and then we'll jump right into the crazy stuff in a minute. X squared plus five x over x squared. All right, here's my easy two-step process. Factor the numerator and factor the denominator 
if necessary, right? Factor anything, the point is, factor anything that can possibly be factored before you begin any of the problems we're gonna do. Do factoring. Sometimes, here it's not bad, but sometimes it's messy, and that's like gonna be a big part of the problem, is like doing a whole bunch of factoring problems. Little factoring problems, all in one big problem. So, can you do it? Let's, let's actually do that right now with this one. The fact that the denominator doesn't need to be factored anymore. It's already as factored as it can be. The point is we want to turn any pro this is already like a product down here. But upstairs we have a sum, right? We'd lo what we'd like to see is a product, right? Can you turn that? Six x squared. Can you turn that numerator into a product? And by that I mean factor it. Yeah, doesn't this feel like the first problem on the warm-up today a little bit? Forget the denominator for a second. If I just said factor that, this should feel familiar. Yeah, did we just do one just like it on the warm-up? X times X plus five, right? Okay, and then the bottom will just keep how it is. And then what do you see? Step two, divide out any factors yeah. that you might have in common. Yeah, what can you do? Can you do better than that? Yeah, we have an X in the, the top and an X squared in the bottom. So those cancel out, leaving just an x downstairs. Yes? But you so said the bottom was already simplified. So we have x plus 5 over x. Well, the bottom is, is factored at the top. It's like exponents. Do you agree that we can do that, Marcelo? I think we agree that this thing in the box I've just put here is equivalent but better, kind of simpler than what we started with, right? That's the point here. We want to take this nasty expression and maybe simplify it a little bit. In fact, actually, that's one you know how to graph, right? Maybe you didn't, weren't feeling very comfortable about graphing this. But actually, you could graph this, right? Cardinal asymptote is y equals 1. Right? Vertical asymptotes at x equals 0. You can actually graph that now. Questions, comments so far? You catch this? I'm going to make you do another one now. A little nastier, the same process. Go. Back to the numerator. Back to the denominator. Cancel stuff out. Then call it a day. Well, don't give it away, John. So um, let me call on whoever I like. Uh, the numerator, Alan's going to factor for me. Alan, can you just forget the rest of the problem? Just factor the numerator for me. Forget the whole problem. Just I just want you to factor problem. Forget the big problem. How do you factor that numerator? Yeah. If it looks familiar, it should. Hasn't changed since we did it. Does it, and it still works ten minutes later. Okay, good. All right. Good job. And Jennifer, get the bottom. Yeah, just back in the top. How about the bottom? <laughs> Maybe you can factor it though. Well, because really we can't. We're at an impasse. Oh. We're at an impasse if we can't turn the sum, or in this case, the difference, into a product of two things. So we really need it to be something times something in order to do any canceling. You have it? No. No? I'll give you a hint. It's also similar to one of the warm-up problems. If it had an X, it would be... Oh, um, come on. I don't want to look at it. It's, it's X minus two. Oh. Yeah, so we're going to say 
Yeah, absolutely. x minus 2 times x plus 2. Do you agree with her? All right, that was the tough part, is factoring, right? Factor the numerator, factor the denominator, factor anything that can be factored. And now, we're in that situation where you have something times something, <coughs> and on the bottom also, something times something, and we can now, this is the fun part, we can, now we can cancel them out, right? But don't be over here being like, oh, an x squared, and an x squared, I can cancel those out. Oh, I look, a negative 4 and a negative, I can cancel those out. No, don't do that. Don't be killing kids, okay? Stars. Stars, excuse me. Now you can cancel stuff out. The plus two and the plus two cancel out, or the minus two? The x plus 2 and the x plus 2 cancel out because they're the same thing, right? We're in this situation, right, Alan? B times A over C times A. Don't you agree? Isn't that the situation we're in? We have something times something over something times something, and those two somethings are the same, aren't they? Don't you agree up top here? Look, Alan. Don't you agree that B times A over C times A is B over C? Isn't the same thing if you put exactly x, same. Uh, minus 2 plus x. No. Sure. All right, that's our final answer there. You just back it. Yes. All right, do you agree? Do we agree with this result? And actually, again, actually, the thing I started with is something, some complicated rational function, but it's actually just this function, which is one you could grasp. Has a horizontal asymptote of y equals 1. Okay. Has a vertical asymptote of x equals 2, right? I mean, that we can't do anything more with, because I know there's a temptation. You're like, oh, x and x, we could cancel that out, right? No, you can't. No, you can't. Why? Because the star is going to get burned out. Yeah. Because... Again, this is not a project. I agree, Alan. If it was 6x divided by 2x, like 6 times x and 2 times x, then you could cancel them out. But this is, that's not what this is. This is x minus 6. Do you understand? It's only when it's a product that you can cancel stuff out. Right? Don't be killing kittens. Yeah. Does it matter if it's a positive 2? But if you had a If you had it in the other order, you had it in the other order then it would just cancel out the here and here, right? <laughs> Regardless, no matter. Yeah, they don't have to be on top of each other. Yeah, if you had accidentally written this way instead, there's no accident about it. It's fine. These cancel out, right? Yeah, it's like saying, is is it true that a times b over c times a is that also b over c, Mr. Chase? Yeah, yeah, it is. If you want them to be right underneath of each other, you can rearrange them, <laughs> right? Because a product is a product. You can. Okay, so let's stop there for a second. Everyone good? Factor everything you can factor, yeah. And then cancel stuff out. Yeah. Okay. Now let's talk about multiplying fractions. This is, again, going back to elementary school for a second. All right, Jocelyn. Okay. All right, so mini fraction lesson, please, someone help me out. How do we multiply two fractions? Or we do this with like crazy x's and whatever else. You multiply, yeah, good. And both of you guys avoided the pitfall that everyone else falls into normally, right? You multiply, yeah, you just multiply straight across. Numerators, denominators, call it a day, right? A lot of people are like, oh, well, you can cross multiply. No. Some people are like, oh, how do you first have to find the common denominator? No, <laughs> right? You don't have to do any of that. Multiplication of fractions is, is the easy thing, right? That's why we're saving adding fractions for later, because that is a little tricky, right? Multiplying fractions, you just go straight across. So how do you do this one, for example? Multiplying straight across, you get on top, help me, help me, 45 and on the bottom, 150, so 45 over 150. And then we have to reduce that, okay, okay, that's how we divide into 45 and then down here 50. 
How about uh, five, three, five? Oh, maybe 15, right? So we get three over, I don't know, over 10. ten. Okay. Whew. All right, now let me stop and give you another mini lesson for all my elementary school. From my prior experience as a teacher, I think about half of you probably remember this trick or know it, and maybe half of you don't remember it or were never taught it. Okay? So are you ready? There is a faster and easier way to do what we just did without having to think about what these big numbers are. Do you remember this? 5 and 25, before we do any multiplication, 5 and 25 have a factor in common. 1 and 5. We can do the canceling out and the simplifying before we do the multiplication. And 9 has a multiple of 3, right? And 6, if you, multi if you divide out the 3, gives you a 2. And now can you do it? 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 5 is 10. You don't ever have to think about the big numbers then. Yay. Is that life changing? Yeah. Yes, good. Okay. I'll play with the puzzle. You can cancel stuff out before you do the multiplication, is what I'm saying. And that saves you a lot of pain and heartache. You never even have to think about the numbers 45 or 150, right? It doesn't. 5 and the 25 share something in common. Because the point is, like, this is 5 over 6 oh, times 9 over 25. That's the same, I mean, these are all this one, it's like one big fraction, right? It's just five times three times three over three times two times five times five. That's really the problem, isn't it? Isn't it? You're saying, yeah, but you sure? Yeah. Isn't that really what we're doing if we like x-ray it? And then you're like, oh yeah, boom, 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 boom. Oh, it's three over 10. You just have to have x-ray vision, you know? In general, let's, let's, it's worth saying again, how do you multiply fractions? Straight across, numerators and denominators. Don't ever say anything else otherwise. Okay, that's all you do, you multiply straight across. I mean, really, look at, look at what we're doing. It's almost like you're just making it one fraction, really. It's a fine way to think about it. All right, so let's, let's see if we can do this exact same thing we just did with crazy expressions. Here's my easy, easy four-step process. Factor of the numerator and denominator. Again, just, just factor the, the general instructions. Just factor anything that can be factored, right? Do it. Just do it. Everywhere. Factor anything anywhere that can be factored. I don't, I'm worried about you, too. I know you're paying attention. But not to this. Okay. And then these next two steps we just saw on the previous example can probably be done in either order, really, right? But, um, you want to cancel stuff out, right? So maybe I should kind of combine these middle two steps. And then lastly, of course, we want to simplify, right? Cancel things out. I don't know if you need an easy multiple step process or whatever. We'll just do it. You'll see. It'll, it'll feel right. It feels just like what we did with numbers. So no, they're not going to be any surprises. So divide common factors, that means like cancel stuff out, right? Oh. Yeah, we should, maybe well, we should avoid the word cancel. I mean, it's fun to, I think it's fun to say cancel out. But if we want to really be mathematically precise and we want to sound like smart, we would actually say divide, right? Because that's really, what, why is canceling out? Why does that work? Because we're dividing, right? So maybe we should avoid using the word cancel out. We should retrain ourselves to say divide. Because that's all we're doing. Why it works. It is fun to like slash through things. All right. This one doesn't require any uh, any factoring really. This is already like a product. There's no there's no sum here at all. And I give you this one because it's kind of similar to ones we've done before, right? So I might multiply. 
You can do this in a couple different orders, right? I don't know. Do you want to multiply it straight across on top and straight across on the bottom? Or if you want to start canceling things out right away, you can. But regardless, you have, we should all get the same answer in the end. Um, so we can do it. Let's see. So we get 30. Wait, so you got a factor of both? Like, so you do four factors? Well, everything's already factored, actually, on this one. So I just want to give you this as a baby first example, because we've done this one before, maybe. We get 30 x to the fifth, y to the third on top. On the bottom, we get 20. Uh, 20x y to the fourth. All right. So, and by the way, like I said, you didn't have, you could avoid doing what I just did and start canceling stuff out right away. Does that make sense, Sam? And this is the fun part, you want to start canceling things out. What do you see? Haven't we done a problem like this before? Earlier in this semester even, right? We cancel some stuff out. What do we get? 30 and 20. We could reduce that to 3 and 2. x to the fifth over x. That's x to the fourth, just on top. And what about y to the third and y to the fourth on the bottom? What will that be? It'll be just one y on the bottom, right? y to the first on the bottom. And like I said, if you wanted, actually, you could do that a little more quickly if you just canceled stuff out right away. You know, you could just do that here. You could just be like, okay, well, there's a 5 and a 10. That's a 2. There's a 6 and a 2. That's a 3. 3, 2, right? There's a y squared and a y. Those cancel out, leaving another y. All right, we could cancel all these y's out. We could just get, like, one y there. You know, so you could go through and do this this way, and you still get the same thing. There's a 3. There's a 2, right? Whatever. No, we're not done. No. Right, we got to do this one before we leave. Okay. I'll, I'll hand this out. Please, 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 please do not, do not. Please. We have to do this one. We absolutely have to do this one. What are you going to do first before anything else? Factor. Factor everything. So there are lots of things to factor here. Every single one of these problems is going to be inside of it, a whole bunch of little factor problems. So you better get start getting good at factoring. You're not ready. It never goes away. Okay. Are you ready? Here we go. Let's see if we can do this for the building. Ah, we're not going to be able to do it. I can already feel it. But let's start at least. Okay. Pull out a up top here. We can pull out a four x. We have one minus x. Okay. Over here, I'm already kind of getting excited about that, you guys. Right? The four x. Because down here I have a 4x. Aren't you excited? What about over here? x squared plus 2x minus 3. That factors somehow. I don't know. What is it? x plus 3. x minus 1. And over here, what do we have? Yeah. What is the x plus... 3x minus 2, right? Yeah. 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 And then start, this is the fun part, start canceling stuff out. We have everything as a product now. 4x's cancel out. The x plus 3's cancel out. And actually, this is actually oh, an x minus 1 as well. If you, if you flip it, but you can't flip it. If you, if you factor out a negative 1. So actually, let's see if we can do this here. Uh, this is negative 1 times x minus 1. OK, all right. Well, we'll I was worried about that. All right, we'll have to pick up right in the middle of that problem tomorrow. I apologize. But 